भगवान श्री योगी राम सुरत कुमार की सर्वों योगी राम सुरत कुमार टुडे वी शेल शेयर टू इंसिडेंट्स विच इलस्ट्रेट नदर साइड ऑफ भगवान ए ग्लिम्स ऑफ भगवान like bhagwan how he helps even people who commit mistakes why is it? how he set them right put them back in the right path in the first incident one bt durai rajan ias was holding a high post the government He used to come right from the days of Punai tree. Once, when he was shifted to one of the North Indian states, he came all the way in a car with his North Indian driver. He used to treat this driver with love. He was very concerned about him because he found this driver in a very pathetic condition. in poverty utter poverty his family was suffering so taking pity on him he employed him as his driver helped him financially and also he had love for him care and concern and that is why he brought him to have darshan of bhagwan so that there will be some progress in his life so after the darshan was over after his share of blessings from bhagwan he urged the driver also to take blessings from bhagwan so the driver was about to prostrate and suddenly bhagwan instead of blessing him with raised hands he began to scold him in hindi he was saying your master has such love for you such trust in you such care and concern where can you see and you are betraying his confidence in you his trust in you by stealing money every day from his pocket how can you do this to your master who cares so much who has given you a new life and not only that every day every day you are taking money from his pocket and so he was saying all those things very forcefully with anger and the driver immediately understood that uh, nobody can cheat the swami the swami knows everything about everybody's life immediately he prostrated to him and begged his forgiveness saying swami i would never never do it again i understand what you mean please forgive me but i did all this because of my poverty i ha- i am i have so many doubt a debts and i am unable to pay back and it's a certain torture to me and i have to feed my family what i get is not enough so sometimes i f- i'm forced to steal from my master which i know is very very wrong please forgive me i will not do it hereafter and that is when shri durai rajan knew that his driver was betraying all the time and then he was watching how swami dealt with him after that swami said if you have so many debts because of which you are stealing and you are going to stop this habit then what should you do okay my father says you buy a lottery ticket of any state you will get 
enough money out of it just to pay back the debts. And then he blessed him. And true to that, he bought a lottery ticket of one of the North Indian states and then he got 10,000 out of it, which is a large amount in those days, and he was able to pay back all the debts and felt such relief after that. And then he served his master. Shri Durerajan saw how Bhagwan forgave him, so he also forgave and re-employed him. Another incident, one day in Sanadhi Street, Darshan, two people entered and Bhagwan, paying some special attention to them, made them sit there. When everyone was just coming, prostrating and taking some prasad and leaving immediately, these two people seemed to be very privileged and people thought they had done something to deserve the special attention. So after some time, Bhagavan looked at them penetratingly and asked, what are you people doing? One of them said that he was selling the handicraft works. The other one was saying he was selling slippers, a shoe mart that he was running. Then Bhagwan, after a minute or two, asked again, What are you people doing? Again, the first one said, I'm selling all this handicraft work. The second one said, I'm selling chapels. One minute after, again Bhagwan asked, What are you people doing? This went on eight times. Every time he was repeating the question and they were repeating the answer the very same way. And some of the onlookers began to think that Swami perhaps had lost his memory power. Like senility, Swami had probably had senility because he was asking only those people would keep on asking because they would forget immediately what the other person says and repeat the question. But Swami immediately got up and called some of those people inside and made them ask, each one asked the same question to those two people. So the visitors also, what are you doing? And then the first one would say, oh, I'm selling handicraft works. The second one, the slippers. And then the second visitor would ask, the third visitor, another eight or ten times passed. And then at the end of which they knew that Swami was not going to leave them, so they immediately got up prostrated at his feet and then begged his pardon. They said, Swami, please forgive us. Swami knew that we were not telling the truth and that is why Swami was repeating the question. We know that. We are actually smugglers. We smuggle sandalwood and that's a huge group and we are part of it. We could not reveal the truth to you, but Swami knew. Please forgive us. Then Swami said, it's not just a case of forgiving. You have to stop this work. This is adharma, this is papa, this is a sin, what you are doing. You should not do this, you should give up doing this. And then Swami said, if you do not give it up, you will soon be caught by the police. After that there will be no escape. They said, okay, okay, Swami, we will not and they thought that was the end of it. And then they started to go. Swami called them again and asked, Where are you going? They said, Swami, we are returning to our place. And then again Swami, after the pass, Where are you people going? Oh, we are going back to this village. Again Swami asked, Where are you going? Then they knew that Swami knew and they could not lie. And they said, We are going to Salem. As regarding this matter, it's something to do with this sandalwood smuggling. We have to meet some people and discuss something. So we are going ahead. Then again Swami said, if you go to Salem, you will be caught by the police immediately. So stop doing this kind of work. You have your families to run. Go back to your village. And the way He said it, His radiant face, and the anger 
the expression of anger and the forcefulness in his words did something to them and at this time they truly said, Swami, okay, we would go back to village because we don't want to be caught by the police. Now we would change and we would run our family with the hard-earned money. So you see, Swami always knows. Swami, Swami's uh, body is not there today, but Swami is all pervasive, He is all knowing and all powerful and He is everywhere. So let us remember, even if you do not worship Him, He is watching us and when we worship Him, we should be doubly careful not to lie, not to indulge in any adharma. Remembering this, we shall appeal. We also found how He forgave them and then blessed them to lead a better life afterwards. To such grace, such compassion, we shall appeal our prayer. Bhagwan, prayers at the feet of Bhagwan. We shall see one or two incidents which illustrate, which depict the glory of Nama and Rupa, Bhagwan's form and name. The first incident, Sri Balaji, who was holding a, a high position in the company where he was working in Vijayawada. There came a certain time which the company had to go through a crisis, many, many, many problems from different angles, from different sides. It was a crisis and the customers had given order after order and the company had accepted it and given word. But despite all that, the company was not able to meet their needs in time. As a result of this, they had all kinds of threats, abuse from various customers. So because of which Sri Balaji was going through mental torture, Every day, every day, there was such tension. He was trying to manage them individually, but failed. And then one day it struck him that he should call all the customers together, hold a meeting, and then come to a decision. Even when he was announcing it to the customers, he had this fear, I'm not able to manage individuals. How will they manage the whole lot of them in one place? At a time, he was terrified inside, but at the same time, he had made his decision and called those customers. He had to go through it somehow or the other, but he had faith in Bhagwan's Nama. So, on the day of the meeting, about eight, the meeting was to be held at 11, 30, 11 o'clock. He called up his wife. His wife and children were living in Bangalore, so he called up. He told his wife to start chanting the name, he, uh, she and the children, in front of Bhagwan's picture and pray for a smooth run of the meeting. And then he called up Sri Masana Muttu Madurai and requested him to do the Nama chanting for his sake with other devotees. So at a time from 8.30, he was chanting himself in Vaisra and in Bangalore, his wife and children, and in Madurai, she Masana Muttu and the devotees there. At about 11 o'clock, when the time of the meeting came, again, for a minute, he was very agitated, terrified, but then as soon as he entered and sat there, suddenly it struck him, we have been singing the Nama for so long, and Bhagwan had given repeatedly the assurance that the minute you call out, you will answer it, my father would rush help to you. So Bhagawan would definitely do something. The minute it dawned on him, he felt brave, he gathered mental strength and then started the meeting. And then to his delight and surprise, 
the meeting was very smooth, there was no abuse, there were no shoutings and uh, everything, everything was uh, discussed and uh, talked over and then finally they came to a good decision and then he was so happy he informed all these people who chanted the name that the Nama was running the show and succeeded very well. His son, Amar Bharati, in early twenties, he had finished his studies and he was going to write his GMAT examination at the end of the year. He started to study, but then somehow the study was not going well and he did not feel confident enough to go ahead. So he decided he would apply for some work and do the work and study as well. So he asked his own father, his father, you suggest some good company and then I will apply. And then when his, fa his father did so, he applied and he went for the interview also. He did rather well. When he was returning home from the company after the successful interview, he saw a butterfly sitting there on the bolster of the staircase. Then he was very happy. He thought Bhagwan had come. Bhagwan had come in the form of a butterfly. He was sitting there. And then immediately he was very happy. He thought he was going to get the job. So with folded hands, he once again prayed to Bhagwan. Bhagwan, you have come here and you are probably assuring me that I should get the job. And I'm praying to you, I should get this job. And then he walked ahead. And next day morning when he came down, the butterfly was still sitting there and then it continued to sit there for the next three days. He was very, very happy and very sure he was going to get the job. But one week passed and there was no call from the company. And then again a few more days, then he rang up to the HR of the company. And the HR of the company said that it's all being processed and he would, uh, they would let him know in one week. But one week passed, another week passed, another week passed and there was no reply at all. There was no news at all from the company and again he rang up but this time the HR almost burst out saying that we have many, many, many problems in the company and the company is in a very bad state. We are not going to employ anybody. So you can imagine it came, came down like a bomb on his head and then he was very disappointed, very depressed. And then this little boy, the youth, sat there in one place and was thinking what was wrong about the whole thing. He saw the butterfly, Bhagwan in the form of butterfly and he was praying to him and what was more, the butterfly continued to be there for three days. So he thought Bhagwan was working on him and the company and the end result would be in his favor. But what happened was just the opposite. And suddenly, by Bhagwan's grace, it dawned on him the wisdom that when you see Bhagwan somewhere in the form of a butterfly or in the form of a photograph, or in some other way, it is a definite blessing, no doubt, a blessing for us. At the same time, we should not think that what we want would be granted and that is the only blessing. What Bhagwan wanted for us is the best blessing and that's what he would give. What wisdom! At that age, many of us are misled. We think immediately, what we pray for will definitely happen and that is the blessing. In this case, if Bhagwan had granted him what he wanted, he would have joined a sinking company, there would be no salary and after some time they would have closed the company and he had come out. The very first job would have met with a very negative situation. And now Bhagwan had saved him from all that. Soon after that, he got a very good job with very good salary and settled down nicely. So let us not define 
Bhagavan's blessing. Instead, we shall leave it to him because that would be the best blessing for us. And with this in mind, we shall appeal to his generosity, boundless compassion. Bhagavan. The Today, we are going to see a very different story, but still, it's a story of Bhagwan's Nama's glory. It's about a lady by name Titani, Tatiana. Tatiana, she is from France. When she had come, she related a story which illustrates once again the glory of his Nama. It seems that she and her husband were living in France, in a village, and they have three daughters. At that time, they were very young, about twelve, seven, five, like. And they had a passion for horses. So in order to entertain their children, they thought they would keep some horses, and they sought permission from their guru, Mr. Lee, who is a very devoted disciple of Bhagwan Yogiram Kumar. After that, they got two donkeys. Somebody gave them two donkeys and they began to look after them for the sake of the children. And very soon, one year after, they got a pony and then another year, they got two more donkeys. Another two years, they got two very good horses. And then, but now, so many animals and they did not have enough space to house them comfortably. They did not have the land. So with great difficulty they were managing the whole situation. Especially in winter, it would be very difficult. In summer and spring, they could rent out some place, but in winter it's very difficult to get. So they had to go through many, many, many difficulties because of that, and the neighbors would come and often quarrel and complain bitterly. And then one day it became unbearable for Tatiana. She began to pray. She, she was already chanting Bhagavan's name, Yogi Ram Sritma's name, as all Lee students do. And little, little miracle of every day would happen, but that day she decided that she would seek Bhagavan's blessings with more intense chanting of His name. So the whole day, putting her entire being into it, she kept on chanting Yogi Ram Sritma, Yogi Ram Sritma, Yogi Ram Sritma, praying for relief from the situation. The very next day, to her delightful surprise, the very neighbour came and offered three hectares of land, saying, you can put them, you can use this land for your animals. Can you imagine? Just the very next day, after chanting Bhagavan's Nama, with her heart and soul. This was the offer, the gift of grace she received from a neighbour. And within few months, the neighbour's neighbour came forward to offer another three hectares of land for their use. It was a very dramatic change in their life. She recalled it with great devotion and gratitude. Her daughter, Natasha, had something to say. She said she was seventeen, <coughs> sometime back, maybe five years back, she must be twenty-three now, and uh, she said she was in France, living near Mr. Lee's French ashram, and she had just joined as an apprentice to a trainer of horses of trot. <clears throat> and every day she would help with the horses, and every night she would take a small tractor, go to the place of the horses and feed them. 
So one day, when she took the small tractor, they used to call it pod, and those horses were kept in paddocks. So she sat in the tractor, and the tractor had two defects, it was already damaged. Only the first gear was working, the second and third would not work. It did not matter to her because she was so enthusiastic about the seva. And then she used the first gear, went to the paddocks of the horses, and then she got down for the first paddock, took a bucket, put the feed, horse feed, and then after feeding the horses in the first paddocks, she went over to the next. She climbed the tractor and she reached the second paddock, and then when she got down, a tractor which was already damaged, which had no control of the brake, it began to move with great speed, uncontrollably, and then it went and crashed upon a tree and stopped. To her horror, she was watching the whole thing, but then she remembered she had to feed the horses, immediately she just left it there, took her bucket, to each paddock, uh, and then after feeding the horses there, she had to go back. So she came to the quad, the tractor, she tried to pull and push the tractor in several ways, she tried very hard, it just would not budge. She felt very disappointed, she did not know what to do, it was night and she had to get back, and she had to take the tractor and put it in the barn. And she, the only way out that she knew was Yogi Ram Saratma. She began to chant Yogi Ram, she sat there and she was calling out Yogi Ram Saratma, Yogi Ram Saratma, please help, please help. And she said to her delight and surprise, the tractor began to move of its own accord. And then immediately she got into the tractor, seated, and then tried to work the first gear, which would not work again. And then she took the second gear, which was working in the reverse. So the tractor began to go backwards, but she had the intelligence to use that, and she kept driving it backwards up to the barn, so where she left it, and then walked back home. She said, it, it might sound like a small thing, but just imagine my condition in the night after feeding the horses, just walking with heavy buckets, feeding the horses, I had to get back home after leaving the tractor in the barn, and I just did not know what to do. And Yogi Ram Kumar so beautifully came to my rescue, I could never forget. It was, for me, it was a very dramatic gift of praise. This is what she said. So we shall appeal to such a Bhagwan, to His boundless grace and compassion. Before we offer our prayers at the lotus feet of Bhagwan, let us think for a moment. We are starting the day with the powerful mantra of Bhagwan Yogi Ram Kumar. How fortunate we are! How many people start the day with a glorious name of God? Aren't we all fortunate? Extremely fortunate. So remembering that gratefully, we'll have to offer our prayers at His feet, but before doing that, I would like to share one or two incidents, somewhat humorous, I should say, uninteresting. In the first one, from Karu, a couple had come. They are no ordinary couple because one, Sri Venkateshan and his wife Priya. Venkateshan had always been very devoted to Bhagwan even before marriage, and he was chanting his name incessantly, and it is 
an expression of his deep love, the devotion, that a huge temple had come there. Huge for us, not very huge, physically speaking, but a very powerful place with a powerful murti there. So they're running a temple there and people are coming with devotion, chanting the name there. And those people had come, his wife, at our asking, started to speak. And she said, from before marriage itself, my husband was devoted to Bhagwan, chanting the name. But after our marriage, he tried many times, very sincerely, earnestly, to teach me the glory of Bhagwan and his name. Sometimes I understood and I chanted. Sometimes I just could not bring myself to do that. So it was this way and that way. And then, after that, we came here to the ashram to do Pada Puja. So while Pada Puja was going on, my husband said, pray to Bhagwan for a child. And when you get the child from Bhagwan, you will understand all his glory. So I said, okay. I will pray because I wanted a child. So you see, that gave me the impetus to pray and chant. So I was chanting the name and praying to Bhagwan while doing Pada Puja. Bhagwan, please give me a child. And then this Pada Puja was still going on. And suddenly this fear came to me. Oh, I have asked for only one child. That means I will get only one child my entire life. Then I prayed to him hastily. Bhagwan, I want two children. And then we completed the Pada Puja, offered the prayers, everything. <clears throat> we went back. Within three months, I conceived. And to our great happiness, to my great happiness, because my husband was, has always been sure of Bhagawan's grace. And to me, it was a great surprise that I got what I wanted, because the doctor said after examination, it was twins. So I asked for two children, and Bhagwan has given two children. What a great gift of grace. So I was very happy. I became more interested in Bhagwan and his Nama, and I kept chanting. And then suddenly one day this fear came to me. Suppose both are girls, or both are boys. That won't do for me. I said to Bhagwan, Bhagwan, I want one male child and one female child. And true to my prayer, Bhagwan granted that also. We got the twins. One is a boy baby, the other one is a girl baby. The way he was narrating the whole thing, it was very humorous, native Tamil, and we were laughing through the whole story. So you see how Bhagwan's grace works. We do not know the secret behind it. We know only that the grace works. We do not know what exactly should be our qualification to draw this kind of grace. And of course, both have been running the temple very well, and many people are coming there to chant the name, and are, they're also benefiting in many ways. It must be their sincerity and hard work. And again, another humorous incident. Sri Shivarama Krishna from Arupukote, had when he used to come, he comes very often to the ashram and does a lot of seva there. He told us one day this humorous bit of a story. He was a student at the time in Annamalai University, Chidambaram University. And one day, he was coming to have Bhagwan's Darshan, and he was thinking, whenever my family people come here, they seem to stay with Bhagwan at Chandadi Street house itself. Bhagwan allows them to stay. But I have never stayed with him. So this time, I must definitely stay with Swami. He decided. 
to stay with Swami. And the way he said it was very funny, we were all laughing. And he said, at this time I will ask Bhagavan and then stay with him. So with this great determination he was approaching the Sanadhi Street house and he found it locked. So he looked up and Bhagwan was coming towards a house. He had gone somewhere and was returning. Even Bhagwan approached the house, he looked at Shivram Ganesh and said, Tambi, which means little brother, Tambi, you cannot stay here. This is no lodge. You cannot stay here. Now you go and come later. The way he said it, very sternly, even before Shivram Ganesh expressed his thoughts, he understood. He understood that one could not take liberties with Bhagwan, and it, what Bhagwan decides alone will happen. But the way he narrated was so, so funny. The change of expression on his own face as soon as he heard from Bhagwan, so, so hilarious that we all laughed so much. The entire hut, the breakfast hut, was reverberating with our laughter, with our happy laughter, because it's a glimpse of Bhagwan. Here in the Pradhan Mandir, we see the Muthiya Bhagwan. If you go near and see his eyes would be on Brahmarandra, on the scalp. He is in deep samadhi. At the same time, you see his hand raised in benediction. As though to say, I am here, don't fear. So, he is there, wakeful all the time, blessing the world, blessing people in great difficulties. And so, to such a one who knows everything, who is wakeful always to bless the people, ready to help at the mere beck and call of the devotees, we shall appeal our prayer, we shall appeal to his generosity and his boundless, boundless love for humanity. Bhagwan, 